Hallo allemaal and welcome to this week's episode of Tulip TV. Another rainy day in Vancouver, which makes me think of the song of Annie and Frieswiet. Is it raining in Den Haag? Regent it in Den Haag? This week I'd like to talk about the difference in drinking age between the Netherlands and Canada. In Holland, the drinking age is 16, and here in Canada it's 19. And you have to ask what is better. 16 in Holland, lots of kids drink early. I, for one, was brought up um, with a glass of wine when I was 16, 15 maybe, and my parents added a little bit of water. But slowly I learned how to, I guess, handle my liquor as I got older. Here in Canada, they can't drink till they're 19. But what we see a lot is kids smuggling alcohol from their parents' home, or I've been approached at the liquor store many times by younger kids asking if I can buy liquor for them. So we'd like to know from you, what do you think is better? Drinking at 16 or at 19? Or not drinking at all? Let us know. Here's what's coming up this week on Tulip TV. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Integrative pharmacy is a combination of conventional medicine along with complementary medicine. All it is is a balance between the traditional drugstore and the balance between the natural products. So if we can bring these two together, then we are truly integrating the pharmacy with the natural products. Michelle, what is your experience on the Pure Pharmacy for the last few years? I'm finding that customers are coming in and wanting to know the choices that they have for their health. So they're wanting, if I take this prescription, what can I take to maybe offset some side effects or vice versa. So having the option for customers is our optimum goal and having them come in in a comfortable environment where they can come in and ask those questions and not be judged on that. Our philosophy is very simple. Our philosophy is caring for our patients, caring for our customers and having a good relation with them so they can trust us. At the end of the day, if we can inspire our patients to find the best therapy for their health, I think we've done our job. And that's the way Pure does pharmacy. for an antioxidant cafe. We've got antioxidant coffee, which is six times more antioxidants than regular coffee. What they've done is they've taken the green coffee bean, extracted the antioxidants, and then put it back into the coffee after the roasting process has taken place. So the coffee is really great for your hair, your skin, your nails, cancer preventative, and you don't experience that crash or that fatigue after drinking the coffee. Um, we're at the trade show today, health and wellness. Everybody's loving the coffee, it's going over great. We've sold a lot of coffee and we're really happy with the results. And yeah, everything's amazing. Um, the bean is from Honduras and the roasting has taken place in San Francisco and the product is now in Pure Pharmacy and we also sell it at Urban Fair. So like what's so good about it? It's rich. I like um, and full bodied.
This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. probably recognize me from presenting uh, the Tulip TV episodes and today we're here in my studio because I'm also a visual artist and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my art. The reason we're filming today is my art is different because every piece of art that I sell I donate 10% of the sale price to the Cancer Society. The reason for that being is I'm a survivor myself so I'd like to support it. And that whole experience is one of the reasons, of course, while I'm painting. I used to be a corporate kind of a girl working in the corporate world. And three years ago, I finally decided life was too short and I've always wanted to paint. And I wanted to follow my passion, which is part from travel is painting. So a lot of my pieces reflect uh, impressions that I had during my travels of the earth. And this is an example of uh, these paintings up here where you look down on the earth. It's kind of like a bird's eye view. And we hear so much about global warming and about the changes in climate and all these things have really affected my painting in the last year. You know, sometimes one of these things goes really fast, other times I could be working for weeks on a piece like this. And I'll do a little bit of this, and then a little bit of that, and then I'll work on another piece for a while. Um, so somebody was asking me how long it takes to do a piece like this. It can be like weeks, and some of them are done maybe in a couple of days. It all depends on where the energy is and what's going on and how the emotions are and how the colors work. Um, Sometimes a painting doesn't work at all and you start all over again and all of a sudden a wonderful other painting comes out of it. Uh, I'm sure those of you who are an artist can relate to this very well. I use um, wood panels. I prefer to work on wood panels because I like to use knives and pellet um, knives so you can really push on it. If I did that on a canvas I probably would end up cutting it and making a hole in it. So. 99% of my work's all on wood panel. Um, I use mainly acrylic paint. Um, it's much healthier to use. Um, I don't really like working with oil because it's very toxic. And it's, I share my studio uh, with another artist and we both really like to think about each other's health. So we try to prevent oil. I do use oil occasionally, but it's a water soluble oil. Hard word to say for Dutchie. Um, but it basically means um, you can dissolve it with water, so it's still an oil paint, but you can use water with it. Uh, most pieces, the name comes at the end. Some of them I'm painting, and I'm right in the beginning, and I know uh, I have a piece that's called Storm. And uh, that one, when I started painting it, I immediately knew that's what that painting was going to be called. This one, uh, there's no final name. I'm thinking about it. I usually have to wait till the painting is finished. At one point it, it tells me it's done and then miraculously most of the time the name comes. Sometimes it takes a while. So ever thought of uh, taking, uh, digitalizing uh, the different phases of the piece? Yes, a lot of artists do that. Personally, I don't. I feel it's cheating. I think it needs to come from the heart and it needs to come from the soul. But I know there's a lot of artists who do that and it's uh, definitely tempting because these days you can do so much in Photoshop and you can play and add colors to your art and see if it works and you would save a lot of paint doing it that way.
This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Hi there, we're in uh, Beaverton, which is a suburb of Portland in Oregon, and we're visiting Hans and Leah Middelhoven's uh, large and very well stocked and very gezellig Dutch store. This is the biggest Dutch store in uh, on the entire west coast, uh, south of uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, and north of uh, Los Angeles, uh, California. Uh, and Hans and Leah over the past 11 years have built out what started out as a really tiny little store selling uh, mainly uh, Indonesian and Dutch um, uh, specialties to a huge Dutch store, uh, well stocked and they have people drinking coffee here uh, all day, every day, but especially on Thursday mornings they have uh, coffee groups coming together. So if you're here ever on a Thursday in Portland, uh, come and join them for coffee. We're uh, talking to uh, Lia and Hans Milhoven. How long have you had this store, uh, guys? We're into our 11th year. 11th year, yes. yes. And, and why in uh, Beaverton, Oregon? You're, you're the biggest, did you know that you're the biggest Dutch store in, on the whole West Coast, as far as I know? Well, we didn't really try that out, but uh, we, uh, we tried to uh, stay in our natural area. We bought it from someone else, with a third owner. Oh, you're the third owner. Do you know how old the store is? Yes, yeah, since 1965 or 67, around that time. 1965, but not always in this location, right? No, no. We were located on Canyon Road. Very, very small store, about half the size of what we have now. So this, this is much nicer. Location's better, parking's better, and the room in the store is better. <laughs> So you guys just visited uh, the Dutch store here. Do you come here often? I come here once a week for sure, if not uh, more often. I love this place. And what about yourself? Uh, at least two to three times a week. Absolutely. So what brings you out here? What's, uh, what's so special? The hospitality. They're uh, wonderful. Absolutely the hospitality. Hans and Lee are just wonderful people. That's great. So they've got this big Dutch store here. Um, are, are you guys Dutch? I am 150%. <laughs> Born and bred. You got it. How long have you been in America? Since 1972. And what brought you over here? I married an American. That'll do it. Uh, does that build character as well as living with a Dutchman? or? It's got to. <laughs> and so when you talk about your Dutch um, heritage, uh, what particular, what, what interests you uh, most? Well, the history of uh, Holland, how it was so important. They came to the United States, the, the Dutch colony that was New York, that was originally uh, Dutch. And our country is basically a Dutch country. There you go. I like that. You like that? We all. I think we all like that. Hey, uh, final question for both of you. What is the best thing you can buy in this store? What do you really, really come for? I come every week for Beschouten. Because they don't have them. Well, they have them here, but they're 500 years old. And uh, yeah, I buy those. And the machi and the stuff that is typically Dutch. Okay. I can't find anywhere else. And, and um, what have you really learned to eat by coming to this store? Absolutely, the herring. And also, oh, yeah. I love the herring. And then I'm a sweet addict, so all their cookies that come over. talking uh, to Charles de Greef and Charles uh, does a radio program uh, once every two weeks here in Portland uh, on the local radio. Uh, Charles, could you tell me a little bit about the program, please? Yeah, it is, uh, it is a rare uh, item because it's the only one in the, uh, the northern United States or actually anywhere in the United States. It is all in Dutch, all Dutch tunes, all Dutch lyrics. So, so actually here in Portland we can listen to Dutch language radio once every two weeks um, if we want to. Pure, yes. 
And and where can we uh, find that? Uh, uh, which station? Station KBOO. That's that 90.7 on the FM dial. And uh, for those people who want to listen via the uh, internet, uh, you can just go to kboo.fm and there is our page. And on the page you can find a place where it says listen now. And uh, you can sit somewhere in Canada and uh, uh, hear the program if you keep your eye on the clock. It is 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Sunday morning. KBOO.FM Hey, we're talking to Heidi and Morgan. Isn't it, That's right, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. And uh, Heidi is the uh, daughter of Hans and Leah, who we just spoke to, and Morgan is their granddaughter, right? Yes. You so, work in the store? Yes, I do. So what do you do? I am. I run the cash register, and then I help stock shelves. So do you know all the Dutch products? Yes, I do. Because I presume you were born in the United States, right? Yes. So what do you like best out of all the Dutch uh, Dutch products? Um, I I really like our croquette. They're really good, and um, any kind of cookie. And and Heidi, you you more or less run the store now. Well, um, when mom and pop aren't in the winkle, then I cover for them. And um, there's three genera- generations of us together, so we all work together as a family. It's a family-run store. At uh, When Santa Claus Christmas time, the Dutch Christmas, we do the winkle with my son and it grand, you know, everybody's in the winkle. So the whole family is together, may mom and pop, to support them. Uh, what do you find are the most uh, popular uh, products that you sell? Well, actually, I think one of our biggest sellers is the cheese, the Dutch cheese. Um, another thing is um, even Americans are coming into the store because they've lived next to an, uh, a Dutch Oma or a Dutch family, and they've been exposed to the speculas cookies or the drop. And so they, even though they're American, they're still coming in for the Dutch products because they were associated with someone who knew about those products. So we do get a lot of Americans converted to good Dutch food. Okay, that's wonderful because you were born in the U.S. as well, right? Yes, but, but I'm 100% Dutch. You're 100% Dutch and you speak Dutch a little so? I understand Hollands, but I can't speak good. Now that klinkt toch heel goed, zou ik zeggen, of niet? What about you, Morgan? Oh no, klein beetje, hè? Yeah. So, so have you gradu- graduated high school? Yeah. So, when you went to high school, do you talk about your heritage or anything like that? Oh, everyone knew that my grandparents owned the Dutch store, and I tried to get a lot of my teachers, actually, I did get a lot of my teachers to come in and try new things, and I would bring cookies and licorice and everything to my teachers, so everybody knew about it. What did they think of the licorice? Oh, um, well, it's funny because they always say I don't like licorice, and then I would bring in real licorice, and they were like, oh! Well, this is really good. I said, well, American licorice is really gross. So, <laughs> oh, Well, that's I think that's the best quote so far. American <laughs> licorice is really gross. We'll go with that. Heidi, I was going to ask you, how, how do you see the future of the store? Because uh, is the Dutch um, community in Portland, uh, is it still very vibrant? How, how does that work? Well, we have the Nike World Campus right up the road from us. So we are constantly getting families that are coming for two years from Holland and coming here to America. So it's five, ten minutes up the road. So we do get a lot. They're looking for the comfort foods, which we have in the Winkle. Also, our uh, support base that we ship out to is huge. And the families and the grandchildren, the grandchildren from the Omas are still doing and buying the products and coming into the store. So it's constantly rotating. And I'm noticing a lot of Americans coming in, but also a lot of um, the, the grandchildren from the Omas and Opas. And what do you get, Oma and Opa? Let's get them eat lecker. Yeah. So that's what they do at the holidays, especially. I'm Marijke Kirsten, and I live in Camas, Washington. Okay, is that far from here? No, about a half hour drive. Okay, how, how often do you come uh, come to the Dutch store? Every two weeks. And do you come for a specific reason? Uh, what are you buying? Uh, to buy Dutch food. What what in particular what particular are you looking for? Um, I like the cheese, the herring, and uh, that's about it. And gezelligheid. 
Gezellig heid. So you don't just come to buy the food. You also come for a cup of coffee. Yeah, a cup of coffee and friendly people and friends. They're mostly Dutch and some Americans. And, and um, how long have you lived in the United States? I have lived here since 1964. No regrets? You? Uh... No, I love it here, particularly here in this area. And have you always lived in, in this area? No. I've lived in California for 35 years. Yeah. I've only lived here six years. Oh, oh, you've only been here for six years, so you decided to come up here for retirement? Oh, my daughter oh. and my grandkids. Yeah. Okay, uh, so how, how much, uh, just out of interest, how much of the Dutch culture have, have, have your children, your grandchildren, um, have you been able to pass on? Quite a bit. They do understand the Dutch uh, language, a little bit. My daughter especially, but my grandchildren a little bit less, of course. But they do, I talk a lot about the, the European culture. You have to live in Portland to buy uh, buy stuff here? No, and the shipping is done mostly over the phone because uh, some people keep asking us, and Leah answers very nicely, uh, should you not get a, uh, a business going where they can do it themselves over internet and stuff? And we purposely don't do that because they want to talk Dutch with us. They okay. call up, they, they want a conversation in Dutch, they want to have the... Uh, the whole thing as if they were back home and that's that's really what we continue to do so okay thank you very much for talking to us guys and thank you very much for the hospitality we had a wonderful morning here thanks so much This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Welcome, we are now at the Indonesian restaurant Purimas in Amsterdam. And uh, well, we will uh, serve you the very nice uh, Indonesian rice tafel, that's the Indonesian specialty, where you will have many different dishes, traditional Indonesian dishes, all, all served in very small portions. So I hope you will enjoy. different kinds of toppings. You have serundeng, this is coconut powder, and potato sticks to sprinkle it on top of the rice. You have two different kinds of salad, and over there you have chicken satay, the satay ayam, babi ketchup, that's pork and soya sauce, curry ayam, chicken curry, beef rendang, the spicy beef, and this is fried banana for the dessert. the Indonesian rice wine, which is called Arak, which on itself has about 40% of alcohol, so much stronger than the Japanese sake. Yeah. It is served in uh, room temperature. Well, here we have a uh, dessert with an Indonesian tropical fruit called Nanka, which in English is a jackfruit. It looks like a big melon, which all these different slices, uh, which you need to peel out. But it's, I need to warn you, it's very sticky inside. Well, I hope you enjoyed your dinner at our restaurant and hope to see you next time then. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed our program this week. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And remember, we're independently produced, so we solely rely on sponsors and viewers. So if you really like us, please go to our website, www.tulip.tv, and click on donate. On behalf of everybody here at Tulip TV, we'd like to thank you for watching us, and we hope you watch us again next week. Tot ziens!